Hi, my name's Paul Rouse. I work at Imperial College in a team called CORE, that's the Carbon Dioxide Removal Hub. My name is Richard Templer. I'm an Emeritus Professor in Climate Innovation at Imperial College London. Climate change is caused by? CO2. CO2. Well, our problem is that humanity has put so much carbon dioxide up into the atmosphere. We've changed the balance of the planet. Greenhouse gas removal is the removal of greenhouse gases that have already been emitted out into the atmosphere, capturing those greenhouse gases and taking them and putting them away somewhere safe and secure for the future. Greenhouse gas removal is really important because we know for sure that we will never get to the point where we've stopped emitting all the greenhouse gases. So we're going to have to keep on cleaning away the stuff that we can't eliminate. So it's a little bit like tidying up the mess that we've made. So instead of emissions reductions and carbon capture and storage, we're trying to stop throwing more rubbish away. Greenhouse gas removal is about going out and picking up the rubbish that we've already emitted and putting that away and storing it away. So it's reducing the total stock of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. We're behind reducing our emissions. And that means there's stuff up in the atmosphere that we need to remove as well. The only way to do that is with the greenhouse gas removal. The world's governments have agreed that we want to constrain warming to 1.5 degrees. It was agreed in 2005 with the Paris Agreement. We're in a position now where we've acted so slowly in our response to the challenges of climate change that we can't only just reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but we've now got to start removing greenhouse gases that we've also emitted to get to 1.5 degrees. So really it's because we've responded too slowly over the last 20, 50 years that we're now having to look at greenhouse gas removal. First thing, reduce emissions. We've got to reduce our emissions dramatically. Next thing we have to do is start adapting to the new conditions. The world is changing very quickly. Then the third thing, moving to the greenhouse gas removal, we've got to do, we've got to start cleaning up the greenhouse gases that are already out there. In 2012, I sponsored the first startup companies that were working on greenhouse gas removal. Um, and the great thing is that those two companies are now really quite significant uh, companies. They've got a decent number of employees, they've got factories, um, and they are producing at a small level, but they're producing products which do remove CO2. Perhaps the quickest and easiest things we can do, firstly, is to grow trees. Another very effective approach is that we can already start doing would be to use biochar. Biochar is using um, biomass or feedstock that's burnt in a low oxygen environment and removes carbon dioxide. And then you can put it into the ground, in effect, and it stays there in a very stable form. And it's actually quite good for crops as well. The really huge scales where you could do things like you could fertilise the oceans, very controversial idea. But if you were to increase nutrient levels in the oceans where nutrients are low, you could accelerate the growth of algae. And algae, when they die, most or a lot of them will sink to the bottom of the deep ocean and stay there, storing that CO2 that they've removed. Another approach would be to use an engineered approach, DAX, direct air capture and storage. In fact, it's in effect using a, an enormous great big vacuum cleaner, or lots and lots of enormous big vacuum cleaners. And you suck air in, put it over a membrane, we use amines usually to remove the CO2. And on the other side comes clean air, which just has less CO2 in it. And you have a pure source of CO2 produced in the membrane, which you can then store and put away. These large-scale systems are being developed. There are companies um, around the world beginning to do this. The best-known one is a company called Kleinworks, who are, are removing CO2 in Iceland. And they're then burying the CO2 that they're removing in rocks where it's mineralizing, in basalt rocks where they're warm. It mineralizes and turns into rock, solid stone. So you're converting CO2 that's been captured in the air and turned it into stone in the ground. So it stays there for hundreds of thousands of years, potentially. There's an enormous amount of money to be made out of this. Greenhouse gas removal that we will need will be bigger in terms of the industrial industrial value than the oil and gas industry is today. It's a huge future opportunity. 
You get to create a safe place for humanity. You can be involved in creating a safe, prosperous future. The best thing younger people can do, all of us can do, is get involved in the conversation, argue the case for responding to the challenges of 1.5 degrees of climate change, um, and encouraging stakeholders, particularly policymakers and governments, to start taking greenhouse gas removal seriously. And that's the best thing a young person can do, is get involved. You know, go to the surgery of your local MP and tell them about your concerns. Tell them what you think. If there are enough of you doing that, you can be absolutely sure that your MP will turn their mind and their attention to this problem. The biggest thing you can do is to influence it. Influence politicians, influence family and friends, influence the business relationships that you've got. And to do that well, you need to be informed. So get on and read and inform yourself about what's going on. Then what can businesses do? Well, take their responsibilities seriously. Large businesses emit enormous amounts of greenhouse gases. So they can cut their emissions first, always cut emissions first, but start investing in greenhouse gas removal approaches and technologies as well. So we hear a lot about um, Microsoft, for example, they have been saying they're going to become net zero. To be net zero means they will have to have some greenhouse gas removal. And they need to be thinking about what sorts of greenhouse gas removal approaches should I use and not only rely on afforestation but be more creative. It's a mistake to think that somehow um, you can't do anything. Businesses need the best employees. Companies that are doing positive and thoughtful things about climate are the places that you should go to. So your first piece of influence is choose companies that look like they're really doing something about climate change. And once you're inside those companies, inform yourself about what they're doing and be vocal. Talk to your boss, talk to your colleagues. Your voice will matter because ultimately the functioning of the company, its success depends on all of its employees. Governments have to establish the frameworks around which greenhouse gas removal will happen. They need to internationally agree who will remove how much greenhouse gas and where, and we'll have to find ways of monitoring that, reporting it and verifying it. We call that MRV. So monitoring how much is being removed, and we need a lot more new science to help us do that effectively. Then reporting what's being removed, that can be reported through the UNFCCC procedures and processes, and it can be reported through the COP processes of the Paris Agreement as well. And then verification, people need to check what is being said as being done is done. Governments have to do those things. Governments also need to provide the financial incentives to encourage people to move into the greenhouse gas removal space, to start realising the opportunities, and there are huge business opportunities. We need to start facilitating and supporting and sponsoring businesses moving into this space, encouraging them to do that. Government has created circumstances in which it is very weak, where it doesn't have very much tax take in order to um, create the market pulls the drivers to make this kind of new economy, a low carbon and climate resilient economy happen. Governments would like to have a simple solution. They're going to have to live with the fact that it's going to be complex and they're going to have to manage that complexity and create the drivers that will enable these things all to happen and to happen well and with purpose. It's going to be difficult. If we're going to make a change here, we need to have a large scale movement towards achieving this quickly. The timescales are very short. And yet at the moment, governments are really very quiet about the need to do this even. We talk about net zero with not, without revealing what the net of net zero really means. Citizens, if they can become engaged and activated to move this forward, are going to be probably the most powerful force in this process. Mm -hmm.